Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be talking about deer clay series. So deer clay series are uh, an infinite series of the form, the sum from one to infinity of a sub n over, n over n to the s. So this is a function of s, which is typically regarded as a complex variable. And so you've probably seen an example of this given by the zeta function. And in this case, the a sub n's are all 1. So it's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. Now, typically, well, what we're going to be talking about in this video are functions f big F of s, where the a sub n's are given by some arithmetic function, sorry, uh, little f of n. Right? So in this case, zeta of s is going to be given by the arithmetic function 1, right? Which we've regarded as a function before. All right. So let's talk about some properties, right? Um, well, first off, uh, if, you know, with Dirichlet convolution, right, we're considering sort of uh, things we can do with arithmetic functions. So let's consider things we can do with uh, Dirichlet series, right? Well, let's consider we just, uh, I mean, obviously adding them together is going to be easy because they're just going to add term-wise by this 1 over n to the s, right? So, in other words, if we had um, big F of s representing the function at little f of s, or little f of n, I should say, and we had big F of g representing the function g of n, then obviously this is just going to be representing the same thing as the function f plus g, right? However, the the uh, the situation is a bit different if we consider multiplication. So let's consider the multiplication of two Dirichlet Deer series, and I'll write this out term by term, right? So we have f of one over one to the s plus f of two plus two to the s. And uh, this is really all we need to get the picture. OK. So when we multiply this out and we're looking to form a Dirichlet series out of this, right, then basically we have to match up these denominators. Because the denominators will multiply, right? So we have to look. We basically have to look at, you know, what denominators do we have to multiply to get n to the s, right? So for for 1 to the s, right, the only way we can get 1 to the s is by multiplying these two terms, which have a 1 to the s. And so we'll get f of 1, g of 1, over 1 to the s. Now, for 2 to the s, we can get 2 to the s by multiplying a term with 2 to the s and 1 to the s, or a term with 1 to the s and 2 to the s, right, from one term from each series. So in other words, we get uh, here, if we multiply this term by this term, we get f of 1, g of 2. And then if we multiply this term and this term, we get f of 2, g of 1. And so the same thing is going to happen for each n to the s, we basically are going to have a sum over these pairs of you know f of a and g of b, where a and b are going to be multiplying in to n. So this is obviously just the Dirichlet convolution, right? So f of 1 times g of 1 is just f convoluted with g applied at 1. And then this sum here, f of 1, g of 2 plus f of 2g of 1 is going to be the convolution evaluated at 2. 
So whenever we multiply to Dirichlet, um, Dirichlet series, then the new Dirichlet series is going to be representing the function f convoluted with g. So let's look at some examples of this, right? Let's consider the function f equals mu, right? The Mobius function. So in other words, we want to look at the sum n equals 1 to infinity of mu of n over n to the s, right? But we don't really have to look at it as a series, right? We can basically use just this property of multiplying and convolution, right? Because we know a nice um, convolution form for mu, right? Uh, we Well, in particular, we know that mu star 1 equals e, right? Now, what is... Right, so if we say... Uh, let's just apply, or let's just say, we'll call this function f big F of s, right? So what this is saying, mu star 1 equals e, is that if we had a Dirichlet series representing e, then it's going to have to equal the Dirichlet series representing mu times the Dirichlet series representing 1, which we've already explained as the zeta function. So if we know what big E of S is, then we can figure out what big F of S is. Now, big E of S, right? So it's going to be this sum from n equals 1 to infinity of E of n over n to the S. Well, E is only, remember the definition of E of n, and actually there's a shorthand if you want to think of it like this, is the floor of 1 over n, right? But this function e of n is going to be 1 if n equals 1 and 0 else. So this sum is going to be 0 except for the term where n equals 1. And for n equals 1, 1 to the s is going to be 1. So e of s is just 1, which means that f of s times zeta of s equals 1. Therefore, f of s which is the Dirichlet series representing the Mobius function, is 1 over the zeta function. Now, let's consider another example, right? Let's consider, well, we've shown before, right, that phi of n is the sum over the divisors of n of mu of, uh, let's say, mu of n, or sorry, uh, not mu of n, mu of d, times n over d. In other words, mu, it, or sorry, phi, right, the euler totient function, phi is the convolution of mu with the identity function, right? So i of n equals n. So that tells us is, what this tells us is that the Mobius or sorry, the Dirichlet series representing phi of n, so the sum from 1 equals n, n equals 1 to infinity of phi of n over n to the s, is going to be the product of the Dirichlet series representing the Mobius function and the identity function. Well, we already know that the Dirichlet series representing the Mobius function is equal to 1 over the zeta function. And so if we look at the identity function, right, we're just going to have the sum of n over n to the s. Well, this is just 1 over n to the s minus 1, right? Just exponent rules. And this is going to be zeta evaluated at s minus 1. So the Dirichlet series for the euler totient function is zeta of s minus 1 over zeta of s. All right, cool. Now let's consider some other things about um, these functions, right? And so this Dirichlet series is defined right over any arithmetic function. But as we've seen, our nice arithmetic functions are multiplicative ones. So let's consider a multiplicative function. And let's see if we can get anything out of that for the Dirichlet series of f. 
right? So here I'm just going to write a shorthand summation. I'm not going to write the bounds. Um, right, so this is f of 1 over 1 to the s, right? But now that we're assuming we have a multiplicative function, um, this is going to be, right, f of 1 is going to be 1. Um, although I guess you could, you could say uh, if you had f of n equals 0 for all um, for all integers, but we're not going to assume that, right? So f of 1 is going to be 1, okay? And then f of 2 over 2 to the s plus f of 3 over 3 to the s. And so here when we get to f of 4, we can't really do anything because we're only assuming that f is multiplicative, right? So we can't break it up over prime powers. And then for f of 5, we can't do anything. But now we see when we get to 6, right, here's where we can actually do something. 6, we can factor out f of 6 to f of 2 times f of 3. And this is going to be um, the denominator, 6 to the s, factors as 2 to the s times 3 to the s. And so basically what's going to happen here is that we can factor this sum. So let's think of a way we can enumerate all of the natural numbers. And what we're going to do is enumerate using powers of 2. So let's consider the first list is all the powers of 2. Okay. Now whatever's left over by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, right, n is going to be just some product of prime powers. And we can consider, right, this is going to be, okay, we can look at the, the prime power corresponding to 2. Now, a in this case might be 0 if n is odd, right? But since we're since we're considering all the natural numbers that aren't powers of 2 here, basically what we need is that n is 2 to the a times some, pro some product of prime powers that, that isn't like a trivial product, right? It's not just, there, there are some other primes besides 2. Even if n might not have 2, right? This a might be 0, but we still consider it, right? So basically the point is, if we fix... Right, n is going to be some power of 2 times an odd integer. Okay, and, and an odd integer that's not equal to 1, right? So we basically want to look at, okay, what are these odd integers going to be, right? So we could have 3, and then in this case, we can just take 3 and then keep multiplying by 2 to get more numbers on this list, okay? Then we look at the next odd integer, okay, and then just multiply by 2, and so on and so forth. And remember that we're considering odd numbers, not just primes. I know the first few odd numbers are primes, but here we get to 9. 9 has its own list, right? 18, 36. It's going to be different than the ones that were on the 3 list. So we can enumerate the natural numbers like this. And so what happens is that in these cases, right, whenever we're applying f to like an odd integer times 2 to the a, then it's going to be f of that odd integer times f of 2 to the a. And similarly, the denominator is going to factor like that. And so we can see in this way that f of big F of s is going to factor, we can factor out um, the sum corresponding to powers of 2. And what we're left with, right, is we're going to have a 1 here because of all these uh, powers of 2 that were in the original sum. And then what we're left with is just all the odd integers. So odds. And now we can repeat the process, right? So we started with all natural numbers, 
and then we factored out the powers of two and we're left with odd numbers right so all the natural numbers that don't have any powers of two in them and then we can repeat the process and keep factoring out primes so what we're gonna get is a product over the prime numbers so p prime of one plus f of p over p to the s plus f of p squared over p to the 2s and so on and this th this is a product over all the primes right and so this is for f multiplicative now if we assume that f is completely multiplicative then we can further right each of these terms is going to be something of the form f of f of p to the n times p to the ns, right? Where um, where we can have n equals 0 corresponding to this 1, right? But now, if f is completely multiplicative, then this is just f of p to the n, and then we can say this is uh, p to the s to the n. So we have this whole thing, f of p over p to the s to the n power. So this thing this thing here is going to become a geometric series and we can apply the geometric series formula and so what that will give us is a product over the primes of 1 minus f of p over p to the s to the negative 1. And so this is a complete completely shorthand form for the Dirichlet series corresponding to a completely multiplicative function. Now let me see if I had anything else to cover. I don't think so. Uh, no. So yeah, that's it for this video. And next video is going to be the last video in this series. Now I put up a poll on the uh, community tab. Uh, basically a vote for which um, which series to do next, right? So currently, in order of the most votes, uh, we have Intro to Manifolds, uh, Inverse Geometry. So this has to do with circle inversion, right? You may have seen this before, uh, where you have a circle and then points inside the circle get mapped to points outside the circle and vice versa and then complex number geometry. Now it doesn't look like that one is gonna win, uh, but I'll, I'll do it eventually, I guess. So currently, Manifolds has the majority, right? A proper majority over 50%, but there's only like 17 votes, and I've had polls with more than 17 votes before. So just go and vote for whichever series you'd like to do, and I can do any of these. Um, and anyway, so I hope to see you in the next video.